So I'm here this morning with Claudio Dundee, who is our official reporter this uh, during the Eden Conference uh, this year. And Claudia is Claudio is a, uh, a long-term member of Eden and a senior fellow. Claudio, from the interactions that you've had, you've had an opportunity to engage with our keynote speakers, with the speakers within the different uh, presentations, with students and with participants in the conference. What are some of your impressions and what do you think are some of the issues that arose during the conference? Well, the conference is very rich in terms of uh, points of view that are expressed and also in terms of the ambition that is posed uh, in the title exploring the macro, meso and micro level is, uh, is a good uh, way to think because uh, it's not focusing only on policy, it's not focusing only on institutional change, it's not focusing only on the learning process, learning interaction. And that has always been a richness of Eden conferences, being able to address from policy to teaching mm. in the classroom. Um, there are so many challenges at the moment uh, in the world and mm -hmm. all of them are affecting education in a way or another. And uh, the conference has uh, proposed quite interesting uh, uh, contributions uh, in how some of these challenges can be faced, particularly the challenge of uh, globalization and commodification of education, the challenge of uh, technology coming into the the life of every citizen and having a massive influence on how people in principle could learn but also in how education could be administered and uh, how credentialization can be restructured. So a lot of, a lot of <coughs> quite interesting uh, stimulus. What I find uh, a little bit less uh, complete uh, is the system view. Mm. It seems that uh, each uh, challenge is coming uh, alone and uh, this is not uh, good uh, we need to see the whole of the challenge mm. then of course we can act uh, one by one but first we need to think globally and have uh, the full view of all the challenges that are coming we, we have to look at technology but we also have to look at the issue of peace of demographic change we have to look at the issue of climate change as well as we have to look at uh, um, globalization as a phenomenon that is uh, bringing uh, certain consequences on the world of education and makes the life of an educational institution very much different from how it used to be particularly in Europe uh, up to just a few decades ago. I'm glad you mentioned the challenges because we are dealing with some some very serious global challenges. How do you see these impacting Europe specifically? Um, and do you, how do you see the, the conference addressing some of those specific European uh, issues? Well, on the European issues, as you know, Europe is in a delicate moment in its integration process. Some people say we started our disintegration process with mm. Brexit and with uh, the conflicting position between European groups of countries on different aspects. Uh, one of these aspects is certainly welfare and so the, the role of education as a business or as a, as a public good. Another is migration, how mm. we should uh, treat uh, the emergency of refugees first of all but also of migrants from uh, poor parts of the world and threatened parts of the world. I think the, the conference contains element on, on each of these aspects. Uh, it's, uh, it, I would say it's mature in its view, it's mm -hmm. uh, not yet mature in its conclusion. But I, I would say that uh, if we have to use uh, a synthesis expression to say where we are, uh, the celebration last night <coughs> of the best paper gives us a hint because we are stuck in the middle. Mm -hmm. We are in the middle of several celebrated innovation processes that have a huge potential to transform education, but none of these processes has really gone to the consequences that were expected. Mm -hmm. And of course we can ask ourselves whether this is due to the fact that the innovation were finally not so good and not so relevant, or whether they didn't produce the effect because uh, education system is uh, resistant to change in its rules, uh, mm -hmm. in its uh, management, but also in the opinions of the stakeholders, including the students and the parents who don't like to change 
too quickly and to do something that they don't know as, uh, as any human being is doing. But I, my thesis is that uh, the innovation didn't change so systematically because mm -hmm. there was not a system view and each of the innovation was taken for itself. Mm. And that is, in my view, what uh, this conference is starting to to help people to reflect. If we don't have a system view, we will be always stuck in the middle. Mm -hmm. We will always convince a few people, but uh, not convince a lot of other people mm -hmm. and uh, generate uh, self-protective dynamics mm -hmm. in uh, institutions, but not only in institutions, also in political systems, but also in indivi at individual level, teachers, yes. students. Yes. They will tend to defend from an innovation that uh, is not uh, perceived as completely positive from their mm -hmm. point of view. And when we, we hear people who are proposing great uh, horizon of innovation, stressing only the positive aspects uh, and at the same time uh, threatening if you don't change you will be lost, uh, education will be obsolete, uh, people will learn alone with media without any need of education, we will certify ourselves by social mm -hmm. systems uh, our progress. Say, but this I don't like, I'm mm -hmm. sorry. This would uh, compromise my role mm -hmm. as an institution giving certificates. It will compromise my role as a teacher uh, as assessing and giving uh, a systematic view of what has been learned and what has not been learned. Mm -hmm. So all this uh, amount of innovation that we mutuate from other sectors of society doesn't necessarily apply to education. Education is a very uh, delicate system mm -hmm. that uh, not by chance has been resisting to change more than many other systems including health including also other public services not only not only business where do you see opportunities for us to uh, to move in that direction you've you've mentioned we need to have more of a systemic view um, of 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 the issues that we're that we're dealing with, how do we move people into that direction? What do we do so that, um, as a teacher, I don't only think about the pedagogy and the teaching and the learning and 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 take more of that that system view? And as an administrator, um, to look at what are the issues that our teachers are dealing with and and how does technology impact impact us? So how do we move people into that direction? Uh, you know, in our society, the dominant force have been. Uh, leading us to specialize more and more on one aspect. If you look at the research world, uh, you, you get career if you specialize more and more and publish more and more in mm. a narrower and narrower field uh, of interest. This is not good for society. It's not mm. good for research and it's not good for society because we have lost uh, the humanistic view of many forces that are affecting yeah. many drivers of change and each of these drivers of change is not acting alone but is interfering on the other so when we think we are doing a progress in one area we may create uh, a, a negative impact on other areas learning to think systemically is possible many people do but i think the best thing is to organize also the conference in this way so my suggestion for the next year is to reflect on this uh, dimension mm -hmm. and uh, move an additional step in the direction of systemic thinking and uh, also view from different uh, disciplinary societal view what is changing in education mm. and how we can there is always a risk uh, in a close and family community like Eden is it's probably the best forum in Europe where to discuss these things but there is still a certain risk of self-referentiality that can emerge since we all have believed in open education in distance education in technology contribution to improve education and so on we think that uh, the world is going as we think now, for four years, I've not been in this specific area. I've been in education, but from a different policy perspective. And uh, <coughs> it was extremely surprising for me to observe how much uh, uh, lack of confidence still exists uh, about uh, the use of technology in education, about the pedagogy of distance education, about uh, mm. the credibility of institutions that accept to operate in this way. Mm -hmm. They can accept that a small side contribution can be given by mainstream institutions, but when you try to innovate the whole system, these are not serious things. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is how we are perceived. So um, there is still a lot of uh, path uh, 
to, to walk. And we can only walk if we are able to understand uh, the multiple mm. views that are affecting mm. our discourse on uh, the potential role of technology and uh, flexibility in, uh, in learning. What, what role do you see leadership playing in, in realizing these goals? You, you know, leadership is exactly the place where system view should uh, influence the behavior of organizations, mm. of individuals, etc., etc. Unfortunately, much of the management in education doesn't come from system view uh, understanding. They mm. come from uh, specialized education in a given field, from teaching practice, that is good. But before becoming managers in this uh, domain and so leaders, uh, I think they, they have not gone through the necessary multidisciplinary, multi-perspective training. One possibility to do is systematically to involve stakeholders, policy makers, together with educational actors. And that's where I see, it's another point I will raise in the conclusion, the um, privileged position of Eden. Eden is a place uh, that could legitimately participate in the policy debate on innovation in education not just inviting here some members mm. of the European Commission, some uh, civil servants of high level that can sympathize with our ideas and then bring them back, but really proposing a different policy definition context in which uh, mm, it's, it's not compartmentalized. At the moment, it's the Commission which is the center of initiative. They debate on one table with the member states, on another table, they debate with the stakeholders at European level that are part of the normal Brussels uh, bubble. Mm -hmm. And occasionally, they also ask the view of other people in places like Eden or uh, through online uh, consultations mm -hmm. on what should be done. But uh, the reality is, th and then of course there is the, um, the Brussels uh, uh, scene with the parliament, the council, uh, etc., etc. But the real issue is that each of these table is independent from the other mm -hmm. and the only point uh, of contact is the commission and we all know that the commission is not a purely policy making organization and it needs more breathing mm -hmm. possibilities so our idea is to establish policy dialogues in which uh, european networks uh, uh, not only those that are uh, the normal uh, uh, lobbying group uh, existing in brussels are able to uh, to interact with member states mm -hmm. in the same table because it is uh, important that uh, education is too important to be left uh, only to the bodies that are by definition in charge of its policy. Mm -hmm. It's uh, affecting every citizen, it's affecting every family. So we need to have uh, a voice, we need to organize voices and uh, networks like Eden I think are absolutely crucial for this but we also need to improve the way we, we interact with the rest of the world. We are very good with our members, we are very good in creating pleasant and informative environments, we are very good in stimulating uh, debates, uh, but uh, I think uh, what happens after the conference? Well, we are not sure, and I think it's important that we reflect on it uh, and uh, mm. also bring our research contribution, the Barcelona uh, workshop coming soon, into this order of ideas, mm -hmm. not only what is interesting to study, but what is more important to study in order to have an impact uh, on uh, positive change in education. Mm -hmm. So we need to carry the conversation yeah. forward. Exactly. Okay. Um, just as a final question, um, as a reporter, you've, you've attended well, I try not, uh, many. <laughs> although I tend to inspire myself to God, I'm not as ubiquitous. <laughs> of, of the sessions that you attended, um, which topics struck you the most, or which session struck you the most? Well, struck uh, uh, or impressed you? The, 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 the blockchain, of course, is an issue that uh, that uh, poses some questions. I, I think it, of course, it has important application in education, but it raised me the doubt uh, if. This is a way to remove the intermediary role in uh, the credentialization. But much of the education system is perceived as a credentialization system. So if you remove, there is a high risk that uh, people can learn autonomously, can uh, uh, credentialize mutually. And uh, so that is a very risky 
approach for educational institutions as we know. We may like or not like, mm -hmm. because of course, educational institutions are not all good. There are some elements that make us think, well, to a certain extent, uh, they deserve that someone else <laughs> is proposing a different model that is yeah. more liberal, etc. Et but I think there is an issue I don't see. We, we need to remember that education is mostly about learning and only secondly about assessment and mm. credentialization. Mm -hmm. and, um, and only thirdly about quality assurance and accreditation that is a new business that is dominating the scene and dominating the behavior of educational institutions that seem to be concerned just to get up well in uh, accreditation, ranking, etc., etc. So learning at the center, learners at the center, mm. and a lot of organizational innovation more in, uh, in universities. And in other education institutions, we are not talking much about school. That is possibly the other conference, the Italian conference that is going in parallel, is more um, is more focused on uh, on school education. We are uh, as hidden in this conference also a little bit more focused on higher education. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, those are all the questions that I had for you this morning. I want to thank you for taking the time to Thanks talk to with us. Okay. And uh, it was a pleasure having you with us. Thank you very much.